Hello and welcome back to another Code Pro tutorial. Today's tutorial goes out to one of my viewers who wanted to know how to submit an app to the App Store. So today, this tutorial is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for how to create a new app on App Store Connect, also known as iTunes Connect, and then how to create a new app in Xcode and then submit that app from Xcode just like we would submit an app build to the App Store for review. So we'll go through all the steps for how to do that from start to finish. If you're a new iOS developer looking for a complete beginner's course, make sure you check out my iOS Development Fundamentals course available on Skillshare and on Udemy. This course is great for beginners with over three hours of video tutorial content and 21 lectures. It'll definitely teach you the fundamental skills to become a great app developer. So let's open up Xcode and get started. So to upload an app to the App Store, we need to make sure that we have two things done. The first thing is we need to have an Apple developer account. So if you go to developer.apple.com and you create an Apple ID and go through all the account creation steps, you should be good there. Then what we want to do is head over to App Store Connect. So Apple recently changed this. This used to be iTunes Connect, but with iOS 12 and all the latest changes from WWDC, this is going to be called appstoreconnect.apple.com going forward. And this is what the new dashboard looks like, at least at the time of this recording. So once you've logged in, you'll want to hit the My Apps button um, in the App Store Connect page, which will take you to the My Apps section. So you can see here, um, here's some apps I've published, and um, here's some apps I kind of reserved but never really worked on. Um, but I guess you could say I have the name for them right now. Uh, and so what we want to do is hit this plus icon here to create a, basically a new app. So we'll hit plus and create new app. Review the agreement. Sometimes Apple will make you agree to certain tax documents and things like that. So you'll usually get a warning like I did that I have to agree to something over on developer.apple.com. So if you just follow the instructions there, um, you'll just have to usually agree to whatever the document is, and then you can come back here and proceed to creating your app. So um, now that we can create a new app, I'm gonna go ahead and select iOS as my platform. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this new app a name. I'm just going to call it, uh, I'll see if I can do this, Code Pro Tutorials. And I will choose English, US for the language. And a bundle ID is something that you have to register on the developer portal. So um, it's a unique identifier. Uh, it's used in Xcode. And we'll need to go ahead and create that there uh, in order to uh, proceed with the app creation. So then we'll have to head back to Apple Developer to create the new app ID. So you'll go under the Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles section. You'll go down to Identifiers and then to App IDs and hit the plus icon to create a new iOS app ID. And so we'll have to go through the steps here of creating an app ID description, a explicit app ID or a wildcard. I'm going to actually use a bundle identifier for mine. Uh, and then what services the app is going to use. Like, for example, does this going to use HealthKit, HomeKit? Um, push notifications and things like that. So what I'm going to do is start with my name. I'm going to call it, uh, for the description, Code Pro Tutorials. And I'm going to do a bundle ID. And now it recommends using a reverse domain name style string, like com.domainName.appName. So what I'm going to do for mine is just com.codepro.codeprotutorials, like that. And for the services, I'm probably not going to use any of this stuff. So since this is just an example, I'm just not going to check anything. But if you needed to do certain things for services, you'll need to check off what you're going to use for your app. So the final step now is to actually hit register and register the app name. And registration is complete. And so you can see here I've got my identifier. Um, I've got just what's enabled by default, which is Game Center for the service and in-app purchases. So I didn't have to turn those on, and we'll go ahead and hit Done to go back. So now if you go back to App Store Connect and you refresh your browser after you've created your app ID and you go to New App, uh, we'll go back here into Bundle ID, and I'll make my selection for what, the app ID that we just created. And so the next thing is, I'll, since this is me picking my uh, Bundle ID that we just created, I'm going to just go ahead and choose a language. English US again, name will be Code Pro Tutorials. Do one word there. And um, iOS for the platform. 
Now for the SKU, if you look at it and you go over this little question mark here, it's a unique ID for your app that is not visible on the App Store. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick a unique value for me for this field. I'm not really going to show this on camera. And then after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click Create. The limit user access is optional, but you can allow certain people on your team or certain roles to have access to your app. So you can toggle that from the drop down in here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the SKU and then I'm going to go ahead and click Create and then we'll go back to the app dashboard. So I was successfully able to register my app. After hitting Create, I was brought to the My App section under Code Pro Tutorials, which is my new app. And now I'm under the App Information section in here. So the way this pretty much works is you have the name, subtitle, uh, privacy policy if you have one for your app. All of the like main information is here. Um, if we go under the Prepare for Submission section, we have um, where we're going to upload our builds. So what we have to do now is actually go into uh, Xcode and create the app and then register the bundle identifier, all of that stuff, and then publish an archived build through App Store Connect, and then we can see the build show up here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Another thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go back to Apple Developer. And so we already created an Apple ID, app ID here, right? What we wanna do next is create the provisioning profiles for the app. So we have a few different kinds here. There's distribution and then there's development. Um, if we wanna do distribution, we're gonna to have to create an App Store distribution profile to submit your app to the App Store. We're also going to need a provisioning profile to install on development uh, test devices. So we'll start off with iOS app development for the provisioning profile. And so the way this works is you'll pick your app ID and the one in this case the for me is com.codepro.codeprotutorials and once you hit continue you'll select the devices that you want to provision uh, for this provisioning profile, such as your phone, maybe a friend's phone, a family member's phone, that you can actually run it on. Um, and then you'll go ahead and generate the provisioning profile, uh, and then you can download it and then double click it to install it directly into Xcode. So here I am at the end of the steps for creating the development profile. I've given it a name, I've uh, provisioned the devices I want to run, the developer certificate that I'm using, and then I'll go ahead and click continue, and then download. And what I can do then is just simply install it. So by just clicking that, it's going to install it into Xcode, even though it doesn't look like it did anything. And that's fine. So what we'll do next is hit Add Another. And we're going to do App Store for distribution. So go ahead and hit Continue. Same thing. Do uh, the app name here. For me, it was Code Pro Tutorials. So I'm at the Generate step here. and I. I'm going to give this profile a name. So you'll need to make sure that you have all your development certificates installed. Um, you can do that here. I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial, but you'll want to make sure that if you've never created an Apple developer account before, you create the necessary development and production certificates that you need in here, because um, you're going to need those when you get to the configure step in here. So what I'm going to do next is do um, Code Pro Tutorials App Store and hit continue and then I will go ahead and hit download and install that, done. So now I'm in Xcode. I created a new single view iOS application. Um, I've got my bundle identifer set to com.codepro.codeprotutorials like I needed to have it for my actual profile. I've got my team set up, I've got everything here. Um, I can go ahead and just do something really basic like go to the storyboard and maybe change the color of the view or add a text field, just something. <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'll do something just to not just submit a vanilla app to the app store and we'll just do pick a color. Eh, yeah, it's good enough. Or how about a button? So something like that, and uh, I'll just do a little, little constraint uh, fixing. And what we'll do is we're done, right? This is our awesome new app. We're ready to go, ready to submit this thing. So then the, what we want to do is go to Product, go to Archive. 
and that's going to compile the project. It's going to get everything ready in like a release scheme format to be prepared to be submitted to the App Store. And you'll want to make sure that under Xcode Preferences, under the Accounts tab, that you're actually signed into your developer profile from Xcode. If you have not done that, just go under Xcode, go under Preferences, uh, and go to the account section here and just sign in to your uh, Apple ID from here. Hit Download Manual Profiles. Um, and usually restart Xcode after that, you should be good. Um, but then when we get to this step here for archiving, you'll be signed in and ready to go. So what we'll do next is hit Upload to App Store. And that's going to look at the code signing stuff, make sure you're good to submit all the App Store magic that needs to happen. And then we have a couple of options here. We can include Bitcode, which allows the App Store to build your app to take advantage of hardware, software, or compiler changes. Stripping Swift symbols, which reduces the app size by stripping Swift or symbols from Swift standard libraries. So you'll usually want to check that off if you're writing a Swift app. Um, and then you'll also want to upload your app's symbols to receive symbolicated reports from Apple, especially if you have crashes in your app. Um, so you'll want to probably check off all three of these for modern apps right now. And then go ahead and hit next. Now, um, Code Pro Tutorials needs to be re-signed for App Store distribution. I'm going to go ahead and click Automatically Manage Signing. So Xcode will create and update profiles, app IDs, and certs. Or you can do this manually um, if you want to select certs and profiles from your team. So I'll hit Next. And now everything's getting packaged and processed in place. Then the app's being code signed. And so here we go, we have our final summary. We have our app and the distribution profile on the certificate, um, everything in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit upload. So it looks like we hit an error here. Um, no suitable application records were found. Verify your bundle identifier is correct. Now, what I'm thinking it might be is just I'm using um, lowercase letters for my bundle identifier, but in my app, it looks like it was camel cased um, with capital C and capital P and T. So let's fix that and see if this gets us past that. So we'll just do here, let's change that to all lowercase, like so. So to get around that problem, what I ended up doing was making sure that my code pro tutorials was all lowercase. And uh, I actually signed out of my Apple ID account from Xcode by going into Preferences and hitting the little minus button to sign out. And then I signed back in, hit Download Profiles again, which downloaded all of my provisioning profiles, went back to archive my build, and I hit Validate, and now validation is successful. So sometimes that happens, you just kind of have to deal with the quirks of Xcode, and it's a little bit frustrating, but usually you can get through it by fiddling with it for a little bit. So validation passed, now we should be able to upload this to the App Store with that issue. So let's go through this again. We'll check off all three of those. And now you can see here that it's lowercase for the application identifier um, in the keychain access groups when I signed out and signed back in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit upload. And it looks good. So now um, the app will be, or the build of the app is going to be sent up to the App Store. This can usually take about a, a minute or two, depending on how slow your network is or how big your app is. So it's usually Apple's going to have to communicate with um, the App Store. It's going to check, you know, to make sure your app doesn't have any problems. Sometimes um, you'll submit a build and you'll get error messages back from Apple saying there's something wrong with it. Could be you're missing um, an app icon and I actually might actually get kicked uh, get uh, rejected because my uh, app icon has not been set so let's just see what happens um, we'll let this go and, and see if our build is valid when we go back to App Store Connect and so upload is successful so then what we do is we go back to iTunes Connect or App Store Connect and we'll monitor the status of the build that we just submitted. All right, so back on App Store Connect here, I'm going to refresh my page, and uh, let's see what we get. 
All right, so prepare for submission. We'll go ahead and click on that. This is where we're gonna see anything that crops up for a build. Uh, actually, no, let's go under activity. That should have it. So right, here's the build that we just submitted. So you can see uh, that shows the time I submitted it, when I submitted it, and the status of it. So it's processing. Now, what's gonna happen here is whenever Apple approves this, sometimes this takes a couple of minutes, sometimes this can take a couple of hours if Apple servers are really slow and bogged down. But you'll get an email back and you'll either get an email saying that your build was approved or rejected. And if it's rejected, it's probably going to tell you why. So once um, this is done, assuming it's a success, what we can do next is go back to the actual um, App Store. And then under the iOS app, we'll have to select a build. So basically, um, under this part here under build, once you get an approval from Apple, um, you can go here and select the build that got approved. Now, I just got an email from Apple that says um, that my app was having an issue. So it says I'm missing an info.plist value for the bundle icon name. So I don't have any icons with my app, so that's probably why mine got rejected. So if we go back to Xcode here, I'm going to go and look at my um, assets here. And so the thing is with um, Xcode 9 and iOS 11, I think, the actual App Store icon that you normally use to submit to iTunes Connect now has to be bundled with the app. So well, that plus in addition to I don't have any app icons at all or why I got rejected. So when you make your submission, you're going to want to make sure that you have this and you have all of the icons that you need because you will get rejected if you don't have them upon submitting the builds. And since I just created this project as an example, um, I don't have any of this fleshed out right now. So that's why. Um, also, too, that's under my assets.xc assets um, folder. If you're using an older project, maybe you don't have one, it might be a good idea to create a new asset catalog. Put all your app icons and app store icon in there, and then you can make sure that when you go to your general column under your uh, target, and you go down to your app icons and launch images section, you'll just want to use the uh, app icon, you'll want to use all the assets, the asset catalog, make sure all this stuff is configured so that it can properly be found. But in reality though, uh, that's the process. So once all of that is working, you have your app icon, everything in place, normally what you would do is you get approved by Apple, you'll go down to the build, there'll be an icon here to click plus and you'll select the build that just got approved. You'll, you'll select it, you'll hit the save button here, and then you'll fill out the rest of your information, promotional text, description, you'll put in the images, the display images for the app store. Um, and then once you've done all of that, you'll go ahead and hit submit for review. And once Apple takes a look at it, they'll usually approve it or reject it pretty quickly. Um, I've seen apps get approved in one to two days now. They're much faster. Um, and, and really, once that's done, it's ready to go to the App Store. Within a couple of hours upon approval, uh, your app will be pushed out to the App Store. It will be available uh, for whatever App Store region that you're in. And uh, it will be ready for download by everybody who wants to use your app. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure you follow CodePro on social media. You can follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Skillshare, and on Udemy. And let me know in the comments section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next one.